everyone and welcome back in today's video we're going to be doing a whole makeup collection that you guys have asked for i have a video already of going through my entire beauty room and i basically will link everything in the description but that video is going to be in the description where i've gone through my entire beauty room and quickly went over all my makeup if that's something that you'd rather just see one long quick video then you can click the link in the description box below and in that description box of that video you can find all the stuff that I have in here. If you're looking for something, you're like, oh, I like that. You'll be able to find everything in that video's description box. For every Wednesday for the next few weeks, I'm going to be doing categories of my makeup collection. So all the foundations will be grouped together with the primers and the concealers and the powder foundations and the setting powders. And then it'll be like bronzers, highlighters, um, eyeshadow palettes, lipsticks, etc. And those will all come on Wednesdays from now on until the whole entire collection is over. The other thing is, this very recording that I'm doing right now is going to be the beginning intro of every single one of those videos. So I will mark when you guys can skip ahead so you guys don't have to keep on watching it if you don't want to. So I know that some people are going to be like, well, why do you have that much makeup? You don't need that much makeup. You're never going to use it. Well, I'm well aware and... Something that I like to collect, so I don't know what to say. Don't watch the video if you don't like to see all this makeup. So without further ado, let's get into this week's collection. This one is the Benefit Matte Professional. This one quickly became a love of mine when I used to have really, really oily skin. It didn't super really dry you out, but um, it definitely kept you matte all day. So this was a love. Next is the Too Faced Hangover Primer, which I don't even really have to talk about. Everyone always loves this one. Um, it really hydrates your skin, even if you have oily skin or if you have dry skin. No matter what your skin type is, this works amazingly for you. Next is the Cover Effects Mattifying Primer with salicylic acid in it. It has 1%. This is a amazing primer if you have acne. Next is the another one, it's another cover effects, the Illuminating Primer. This is a more expensive version of the L'Oreal Magic Lumi Primer. If you have the L'Oreal Magic Lumi Primer, this is basically just more expensive than that one. Honestly, they look, feel, everything the exact same. So don't mind all the dirt on this one, but this is the Makeup Forever Step 1 Mattifying Primer, and it is literally amazing. Smooths out your skin, keeps you matte all day, loves it. So next is the new Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. And to be honest, you'll see in a lot of the dislikes are a lot of Smashbox primers. I have never really liked any of them, but this one I do like. Next is the infamous Benefit Professional. This actually goes really, really well if you put the matte rescue on first and then this one on top. It completely smooths out your skin, keeps you matte all day, and your skin will look flawless. So this is an old one that I don't really use anymore, but if you have really, really oily skin, a tiny, 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 tiny bit of this is all you need, and it literally basically makes you Sahara Desert dry. So be careful with this one, but it is nice in the T-zone. I wouldn't use it anywhere else on the face, but on the T-zone, this is what I would use in the summertime to make sure that I don't get all sweaty. Next is a little bit more of an affordable one. This is the NYX Angel Veil Primer, and this one kind of reminds me a little bit of the Hangover Primer, but a lot more cheaper. So next is the Giorgio Armani Fluid Sheer, and to be honest, I never ever knew if this is supposed to be considered as a liquid highlight, or if this is supposed to be kind of like just an all-over glow, mixing in with your foundation primer. I use it as a base and to give my skin a whole bunch of glow, or mix it in with my foundation. This is pricey AF, so as you guys can see, there's not much missing because, um, won't cost you a pretty penny. And the last for my favorites is going to be the Becca First Light Primer, and this basically just makes your skin all bright and cracks everything. It makes your skin look really, really nice. And so first up on the misses for me is going to be the Milk Blur Stick. Now, I know a lot of people actually really, really like this, and a lot of people were really stoked about this. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like the stick. I, I, it just balls up on my skin. Um, so this was a miss for me. So the next one that was a miss for me was the NYX Photo Loving Primer. And this is basically like the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. Um, 
I just don't like the consistency of it. And it seems like when I put it on, it, my foundation just slips right off my face. So this was a miss for me. And obviously, up next, Photo Finish Primer by Smashbox. I actually used to like this one a long time ago, but as I got older, this found this primer has just been horrible for me. Again, just like the NYX one, it slips right off my face, my foundation, and this does nothing for me. I know a lot of people love it. If you love it, awesome. Happy for you. I used to, but not anymore. So sticking with Smashbox, uh, the photo finish, this is the light one. I figured maybe I'd try this one and see if I'd like it, but unfortunately, nope, didn't like this one either that much. So this is the Bomb Cosmetics Time Bomb Flawless Face Primer. A very, very long name. Uh, this one, I just, I don't know. I didn't like, there was something about it that I don't like. I still don't know what it is. I should probably try it out again and see maybe if I ended up liking it now, but as of right now, I don't really care for this one. Next is the Sephora Ultra Smoothing Primer, and I should have known that I wasn't going to like this because it is very, very similar to the Smashbox, to the NYX one, to all those real, real heavy silicone primers, which I don't like. Um, should have known, but next is the NYX Tea Tree Balance Skin Elixir Primer, and I broke out when I used this. I know everyone says like Tea Tree, a lot of people use that. I think maybe that's what it is that broke me out. I don't really know, but I got a really, really bad breakup from this, so don't like it. So the next one is the Professional Pearl Primer by Benefit. And the only thing about this that I don't like is that it's heavy fragranced. Like, it smells really, really bad. Um, and for that, I just don't like it. So next is the NYX Photo Loving Primer. This is the anti-redness one. So the green is supposed to correct all the redness. And again, it's that silicone. This one's more thicker than the other ones, but it's just, it's too much silicone for my skin. Everything just slips off of it. So I just don't like it. So this is the Estee Edit Beam Team Hydrate and Glow Primer. And underneath here, you get like a highlight. And then this is gonna be your primer. No matter how many times I actually try this, it balls off my skin. I've heard it from everybody. This also, as you guys can see, the G on there, which if you see in any of the other ones, anything that has a G on it, I got it in gratis while working at Sephora. Um, but doesn't stop me from liking or disliking something. I did not like this one. Everyone always says that it balls up on the skin and it flakes right off and it did the same to me. And the very last primer that I did not really enjoy is the Marc Jacobs primer. And this is the, I mean, it doesn't really say, but it's, I guess a color correcting one. Again, this is something that I got in gratis, as you can see by that G, and I just don't like, I don't know what it is. I guess maybe it's the sticks. I don't know, because it's the same thing like the, the milk one. It's in that stick, and when you rub it on your face, everything just kind of like balls up, and it just doesn't work. So for me, I didn't like this one. Moving on to foundations now, none other. This is my favorite in the entire world. This is actually my number one foundation. Nothing will ever come above this. I keep on trying to find something that's better than this, but there is nothing. This is the Too Faced Born This Way Foundation. If you haven't tried this, please just go get it. It's amazing. Next is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation, and this is a matte finish, so it's a little bit better when it's more warmer out for me, just because now I kind of have normal to drier skin. Um, I love this foundation though, and it's also I think $5.99, so cheapest foundation that I have, and one of the best. This is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. I don't really need to say anything about this one. Everyone loves this foundation. It is really, really pricey, but it's actually amazing. This is more my like special occasion. I will put this on, and I always get compliments. So next is the L'Oreal True Match Lumi, and this foundation has quickly became one of my favorites because it is the really, really cheap, affordable version of the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. So this is what I kind of am slowly replacing that Luminous Silk with. Um, just love it. So next is the original Maybelline Fit Me foundation. I really, really like this one. It stays on my skin all day, and it's a really, really decent amount of coverage. Next is the Maybelline Fit Me matte and poreless foundation this is a foundation that i will only wear when it is actually warm out i can't wear it in the winter time because it dries my skin out way too much 
So next is the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 foundation. Now here's the thing, I like this foundation. My only problem is the colors that I can only get right now are always colors that are not my shade. So I test it in my own house to see how I'm going to like it and I love the foundation every single time that I wore it. However, it is way too deep on me. So it's a love, but I can't fully love it yet. Next is the YSL Fusion Ink and this is the, I think, third foundation that I ever, ever tried in my entire life, and I fell in love with this. There's no finish like this on the market. It is just a very velvet look to the skin, and it looks and feels, and just everything's perfect. So another YSL foundation. This is the Touche Eclat foundation by YSL. Um, the only thing with this one is that it's not really enough coverage. I have to, like, build it up to get to what I want. If you have any type of acne or any type of things that you would want more coverage with, this will not work for you. But now that my skin's getting better, I can actually play with this one a lot more again and still love. So this is the Ultra HD by Makeup Forever Stick Foundation. Very, very important. The stick foundation I absolutely love. It gives you anywhere from light to medium to full, full, full coverage depending on how much you use, and it gives you a very, very nice dewy look to the skin. It's a beautiful foundation. So this is the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation. Now, here's the thing. On its own, I do not like this foundation whatsoever. I find that it just does not stay on the skin at all. It crumples all off, and it just looks a hot-ass mess. However, mix this foundation in with any of your other foundations for extra coverage, and it automatically i don't know what it is it just makes everything look amazing it is literally putting paint on the skin so a little goes a long way do not try and like cover your whole face with it and then blend it all out you will hate it immediately so this is the l'oreal 24 hour pro matte infallible foundation and i actually really really like this foundation um they need to just make their colors a little bit more wider and not so orange because all the colors I keep on getting are very very yellow orange borderline um, but this is a very very nice foundation if you can find your shade it lasts all day I would not say that 24 hours that's a little bit extra but it does last a long time and it is a beautiful foundation so this is the makeup forever matte velvet foundation and this was the second I believe foundation that I ever tried in my life and I actually really really used to love this one I haven't used it in so long, so I probably should give this one a few more shots because I remember liking it, but I know that it is super, super matte, and I'd have to try it out more in the summertime because I know I'd hate it in the winter. And lastly, this is still something that I go back to once in a while. This is the L'Oreal True Match Foundation, and this was the very, very first foundation that I ever tried in my life that was a liquid. And so moving on to foundations that I do not like that much. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation. I had such high hopes for this foundation and it just was a big miss for me. It's the problem for me and I know that I've talked to people who work at the Urban Decay stores and Urban Decay reps and they all say the same thing that it does not oxidize. It just dries down a darker color because it's waterproof and the water evaporates so you get the true color. To be honest, if that's the case, then you need to come out with a shade that when it dries down, it is going to look at least kind of similar because when this foundation dries down, it dries down like two to three shades deeper than what the shade originally was. So that's why I just don't like it. And trying to find your color in it just ends up being way too hard. So it's not really a hate. It's just, I just don't have patience to try and find my shade. So next up is the Makeup Forever Water Blend Foundation, and I don't hate this foundation whatsoever. If I had really, really nice skin, I would put this on. All my clients that had really nice skin when I worked at Sephora, if y'all are watching, you know that I threw this on you. It is a very nice foundation for people who have perfect skin and just want to either even out their skin tone or have just a little bit of redness that they want to cover. Anything that's very slight, this is perfect for you. However, for me, it's just something that I cannot wear. So next up is the Smashbox Studio Skin 15 Hour Foundation, and it's been a while since I used this, but the last time I remember using this, it just did not last on my skin that long. Um, I really hate when brands also put a certain amount of hours that it's gonna last for. Um, it never ever does last for that long, and this was just a bit. 
So this is the Kat Von D Tattoo Locket, and this is the original formula. I have not tried, apparently she updated the formula. I have not tried the, the new one. It just is, it's just not for me, my personal liking. Um, it lasted on the skin for a nice amount of time. I just did not like how matte this was. So again, it's not really a bad foundation whatsoever. It's just not something that I personally like. So next is the Josie Moran Vibrancy Foundation, and not many people ever talk about this foundation. I don't think many people have really tried it. Um, I got it while I was working at Sephora, and it's a very full coverage foundation, and it is a very wet foundation. Like, it looks very wet, so you have to be very careful with how you use this, or else you can look like a sweaty, greasy beast. And for that, I just don't like it. I don't think very full coverage and very, very dewy go hand in hand whatsoever, in my opinion. So next is the Estee Lauder Double Wear. And I really don't have to say too much. I used to love this foundation and I don't know what happened, but now my skin just hates it. It lifts off my skin all the time. It does not last anymore. Everything that I used to love about this foundation now is just a huge hate for me. I know that this is one of the best selling foundations, I think, like worldwide, next to Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. And I know a lot of people love this. I just, I hate it now, unfortunately. And I wish I could love this foundation because I knew how, before I used to every single day wear this. So, next is the Hourglass Vanish Stick. I just did not like it. I don't like how it sat on my skin. Um, so, that might be a personal thing, but I just don't think that it looks nice on the skin so this was a miss. So next is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD and keep in mind this is the liquid version. The stick version is amazing. This version however I do not like. I don't think that it looks good on the skin. I really 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 just do not like this one. It never lasts that long. I find that it instantly it almost is like your skin just absorbs everything and you get like just crates of foundation left on the skin. I just, I don't know, I've never really liked this one. The other one though, in a stick, now that one is popping, but this one is just, it's a no. So next is the Cover Effects Custom Drops, and I just, I don't really like this. And this is gonna sound very hypocritical, but I don't like how you have to mix this in with another foundation to make it work. And I know I just said that I like the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation because it works amazing when you mix it in. I don't, this is, that foundation though, you can, the Marc Jacobs one, you can wear on its own and it works for some people. This one though, you can't put it on your skin on its own. It just looks horrible and that's because it is a full pigment. So this was meant to be mixed in with something else and that's the part that I don't like about it. I know it sounds so hypocritical, but I just, I'm sorry, I'm just hypocritical. Next is the Bobbi Brown Foundation Stick, and I actually bought this after I bought the Ultra HD Stick, and I thought that I was going to love this foundation, and I just did not like it. I don't think that it really sat well on my skin, so it was just a miss for me, unfortunately. So next is the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Foundation, or actually it's a tinted moisturizer. This was just something that I personally can't wear, so it's not really bad whatsoever. The color range is horrific, but if you can find your color, this is, and you don't need to cover up anything, then this is a very beautiful foundation, but it just won't work for my skin, so that's why I just, I don't really care for it, because I just can't use it. And the last foundation that I just don't like is the Clinique Chubby in the Tube, or sorry, Chubby in the Nude foundation stick. And what I don't like about this is simply that. I don't like how it is basically a giant crayon. Um, it's also very, very dry, and it just does not look well on the skin. So moving on to concealers, the first one is the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. And again, just like the foundation, this is my favorite concealer, one of the, my favorite concealers. It is very, very hydrating, so if you have drier under eyes, this works amazing. It does not work to cover up pimples or anything like that. It just works really, really nice for under the eyes brightening. Basic brightening the skin is what it's gonna be good for. Next is the NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer. And again, this is nice for brightening the skin. 
I don't necessarily think that this is a good one for covering up any type of pimples, but it's really nice for brightening the skin. So next are my Tarte Shape Tapes. This is actually my number one concealer, just like everyone else in the world. This concealer will last you all day, does increase, barely ever needs to be set. Um, it just looks amazing on the skin, and the only thing I don't like is that it's always sold out the shade that I need, but the two shades that I don't need are never sold out, which are these two, so I always had to buy them to get my perfect shade. So this is the expensive concealer, and this is the YSL Too Shea Eclat, and it is the concealer version. This is very, very nice. I love the applicator with the little clicker down here, and then it pumps out at the top. I love this concealer, however, the only thing is that that price tag on it is going to cost you a lot, and this is something that you're going to wear, want to wear, unless you got the money in the bank, this is something that you're going to wear once in a while. So this is Urban Decay's Naked Skin. This is a concealer that I absolutely love. I know a lot of people disliked it, but I absolutely love this concealer. It was amazing, and I haven't used it in a while, so I should get back to using this. So this is the Sephora Collection Bright Future Serum Concealer. This is a absolute love for me. It's also inexpensive. The only thing is they were in the process of getting rid of ones with a certain applicator. So this is the applicator that I just don't like. Um, I like the other one that I use on camera a lot, and that is the same applicator as the Naked Skin. But this one I just don't like. It's way too hard, and it like just does not move. So in my opinion, this is the best concealer that you can use to cover up a pimple. This is the Makeup Forever Full Cover Concealer. So this is a concealer that you don't want to use underneath your eyes, in my opinion. Anytime that I have tried it, it is very, very drying, and it leads to your eyes, your under eyes just creasing like no tomorrow. So this is good for pimple covering, but not good for under eyes. And this is the last favorite of mine, and it is the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. Everyone loves this. A lot of people don't use it anymore because Shape Tape has basically replaced this. But this is a really nice concealer. So moving on to ones that I do not like. This is the Makeup Forever HD Concealer. And it's basically supposed to color correct and brighten your under eyes. And I just did not find that it did the color correcting at all. It brightens underneath your eyes, but it just does not do color correcting. So I just didn't really like it. So next is the Kat Von D Tattoo Locket Concealer, and I just did not like this one. It's supposed to be used for underneath the eyes, but I just find it way too dry for my under eyes, and they always end up creasing, so I just did not like this concealer. So this is the Tarte Maracuja Creaseless Concealer, and I don't like this concealer. The reason why I don't like this is it is super, super thin thick. When you put it on, it's very, very luminous. It kind of reminds me of the Josie Moran Vibrancy Foundation, that same consistency where it's just too full coverage and it's way too glowy. The other thing is it says that it's creaseless, but it creases like no tomorrow, so this was a miss for me. So next is a Canadian brand, and this is the Nude Sticks Concealer. So I just didn't like this because of how, what it is. It's a pencil, and I just don't think that pencil concealers should ever be a thing. They tug way too much on your under eye and typically have a super dry formula to it. So next is the Bare Mineral Stroke of Light Concealer. Some people say that this should only be used on the cheekbones to give it a glow, and some people say use it underneath the eyes. No matter where I use this, it never ends up looking or setting nicely. So this was a miss for me. And the last concealer that was a miss for me was the MAC Prep and Prime. And originally, I absolutely loved this concealer. And it was the first or second concealer that I ever tried in my life. I love, so I absolutely love this applicator. I love applicators that have that clicker where this one spins instead of the YSL that pumps. But I love the the applicator. I And I used to love this when I was younger. I don't know if they've changed the formula or something, but it just doesn't work anymore for me. It creases all the time, so this was a miss for me now. So next we're going to do setting powders and powder foundations, and this is the infamous Laura Mercier translucent powder, and I don't really need to say too much at all. This is a great setting powder. So this is the Kat Von D translucent powder, and as you guys can see, it has been very used and I've gone through 
think two of them and I have another two that's on my backups for after I'm done this one. I absolutely love this. It is amazing. So this is the Cinema Secrets Translucent Setting Powder and this is a amazing translucent powder. So next is the Mega Forever Ultra HD powder and this is a finishing powder which is very different to setting powders and a lot of people don't like this and that's because a lot of people don't realize what finishing and setting are and there's a very big difference. This is the absolute last thing that you will put onto your face and you put the lightest amount of it on. You are not supposed to put it on like if you were to bake for instance. This is not something that you bake with because there will be major flashback. If you take this and you lightly dust it on the skin, at the very, very end, you're in the safe. But a lot of people don't use it anymore because of those famous celebrity photos where they have like white all underneath their eye. Again, this is something that if you know how to use it properly, you would love it. If you don't know how to use it properly, you probably will hate it. And keeping with that same thing, this is the Stellar powder and this is another finishing powder. It's not something you want to bake with. If you bake with it, you will have flashback. If you use it, just like the Makeup Forever Ultra HD one, you'll love it. So next up, this is really dirty, so apologies, but this is the Hourglass Ambient Light and this is the Diffused Light. Now, a lot of people use this very, very differently. There's multiple ways. I don't really want to start a huge fight over it, but this is supposed to be used, they say, all over the face. I do not like it all over the face. I don't think that you should use it all over the face. I think just putting it underneath your eyes. Now, this is very similar to the Becca powder foundation packaging. This is the Becca translucent powder, and this isn't one where you're going to bake your face with um, whatsoever. It is a pressed powder, and this is really, really great for just touching up if you get, like, oily in certain areas. You just pat this on, and it instantly just fixes anything that was kind of like separating a little bit and keeps your skin looking nice. So the last one for setting powders is going to be the RCMA No Color Powder and this is a very very nice powder. I rarely ever reach for it just because of the packaging. I don't like how big this is and it reminds me of like a salt shaker with the lid like that. So I don't use it as much but when I do use it I remember how much I love it. Be very careful on where you buy this as well. I had a friend who bought it off of Amazon and when she got it, it was actually baby powder or flour. I can't remember what was in it, but be careful where you buy this because people are scamming out there. So next we're gonna do all powder foundations and this is the Bobbi Brown powder foundation. Oh, I love this. It gives the skin almost like a uh, glow to it without it looking shimmery. Next is the Lancome powder foundation and I like this. The only thing I don't like about this is that it smells like baby powder. I don't know what it is about this and the CoverGirl one. There's just a baby powder scent to it that I just don't really like. So I don't use it as often, but when I, it is ultimately, if you can get over that scent, it is a nice powder foundation. So this is very, very old. It is literally all over pan. I wish you could still get this powder foundation and I wish they didn't discontinue it, but this is the NARS powder foundation. It's very, very old, but I don't ever use it just because of how old it is. I just really, really like it. And I just keep it just because if it ever comes back, I will remember what shade I am. And that's the only reason why I won't get rid of this, but I really, really should. So next is the Drugstore Powder Foundation, and this is the L'Oreal True Match Powder. And I really, really like this. Again, it gives the skin a very nice, non-cakey look to it. So I appreciate that, L'Oreal. So next is the Becca Powder Foundation. Now this has been discontinued. However, they are still pushing all of the extras that they have and you can always find it on Hot Look for like 50 to 60% off. If you know what your shade is, that is one place where you can go to try and find it. I unfortunately can never find my color anymore. So this is basically empty now and I'm just gonna hold on to it in case they ever bring it back and I can know exactly what my shade is. So this has been clearly abused because there's a crack in it and everything has been basically wiped off, but it is the, this is the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder Foundation and I really, really like this. The only thing now, I can't really use it as much because it's a little too mattifying, but if you are oily and you want a good drugstore 
not too expensive powder foundation that is really great with oil control, this is your go-to. So this is my all-time favorite powder foundation, and I have them three different colors. And if you know on Instagram, I was saying I'm not sure if I can find my winter shade. My winter shade is now 15 for summertime. It is 25, and to set underneath my eyes when I want to just brighten it, it's number five. This, I could actually show you how many of these I have. It is the best powder foundation in the entire world. There's nothing that's going to beat this. It smooths your skin out, gives you a nice radiant look. Even if you're oily, it looks amazing. Anybody's skin that you go into Sephora and you're like, wow, their makeup just looks so good. If you ask them what powder they have on, it's going to be this. Everybody that works at Sephora gets put onto this powder and it is just perfect. And I can't really show you, but when I tell you that I love this, there is six of them in my hands right now. There's three there, one there, two here. These are all empty. I absolutely love this powder. So moving on to powders that I don't really like that much. Um, this is the Giorgio Armani powder foundation. And the only thing I don't, the only reason why I don't like this is because of the price tag. I don't think that it does anything that deserves that price tag. I know that it's a luxe brand, so that's why it comes with a hefty price tag, but I just don't think that it's anything special. It's not a bad powder foundation, it's just nothing special. So next is the Ofra Translucent Powder, and I just don't really care for this one. Um, it's supposed to just be like a touch-up powder, but for me, it always leaves major white marks on my face where you can noticeably see it no matter how light I go with it so I just don't care for this. And the last one this is the Cover Effects powder foundation. The good thing about Cover Effects is no matter what shade you are in any other products you'll always be the same number throughout all of them. There might be a very slight difference but majority of the times they are like spot on. That's one thing I like about Cover Effects. However I just did not really like this one. Um, it just, it's not a bad powder foundation. It's just nothing that wowed me at all. So I just never ever reach for it now. So thank you all for watching this week's collection. And I will see y'all in next week's collection. See ya.